call to order the Grand County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for August 18, 2016. Welcome everybody. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance and the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico as the symbol of perfect friendship among the United Cultures. Are there any changes need to come on the agenda? No, Mr. Chairman. Can I get a motion to approve? Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the regular meeting agenda. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Public input. During this portion of our meeting, we welcome your suggestions and want to hear your concerns. This is not a question and answer period. Speakers will be limited to five minutes. Any individual who would like to discuss an item in more depth may request to be placed on a future agenda. Request forms are available in the county manager's office. So at this time, we actually asked for public input on the animal ordinance, which is what line item is that? Resolutions. Number Z. So if there's anybody here to, to provide public input on the animal ordinance, we're going to do that first since we're going to be going through the, the ordinance with, with you. So public input on the animal ordinance. Going once. Twice. Okay, I guess they just thought they wanted to have public input. They asked for specific input and then didn't come. So they, they, they did have a meeting with a member of the committee and also with our attorney, Abby. Okay. So they've already had it. And then we've got that information. What we'll do now, we'll take the information that was given at the uh, meeting and then uh, to the committee and we'll, we'll then... Uh, look at it and make any recommendations then to the uh, commission that we think is necessary, the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, then uh, we will stand for any public input at this time. Just raise your hand. Come on up. Is it on? No. Nope. Just push the white button. There you go, man. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Manuel Maldonado. I'm a corporal with the Grant County Sheriff's Department. I've been, been employed with the Sheriff's Office since November 5th, 2007. I'm here alongside my brothers to speak to you all about our concerns. But first of all, I would like to have a moment of silence for Officer Jose Chavez of the Hatch Police Department and all other officers that have been killed recently. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to go over some law enforcement facts. There are more than 900,000 sworn law enforcement officers now serving in the United States, which is the highest figure ever. About 12% of those are female. According to the FBI's Uniform Crime Reports, an estimated 1,165,383 violent crimes occurred nationwide. Crime fighting has taken its toll since the first recorded police death in 1791, there have been over 20,000 law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty. Currently, there are 20,789 names engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial located in Washington, D.C. A total of 1,439 law enforcement officers died in the line of duty during the past 10 years, an average of one death every 61 hours, or 144 per year. There were 123 law enforcement officers killed in 2015. Currently, to this date, 
there are 76 law enforcement deaths. 38 of those are due to gunfire. Two assaults, 29 automobile accidents, and 11 other types of deaths. Today, we the employees of the Grand County Sheriff's Office are here to support the Sheriff's statement of getting the Sheriff's deputies and administrative staff more money. The Town of Silver City recently got a pay increase that was pushed by the Chief of Police and agreed upon by the City Manager and Town Council. By next year, officers on patrol will be making over $20 an hour. This was done because of officers because of officers leaving for more money. We do not get paid what we should for the job we do. In the past few years, we have covered both Santa Clara and the town of Hurley due to lack of officers. We have taken on several cases from the mining district. We assist the town of Silver City when they are busy on high profile cases. The money we are offering currently is not attracting any qualified applicants. Back in the 1990s, the Grant County Sheriff's Office was one of the highest paid agencies in the state of New Mexico. We used to get over 100 applicants from people from around the state and from out of state. We now average about five applicants, in which case most of them are uncertified. We're asking for the commission to find money to make us parity to the town of Silver City from patrolman to lieutenant. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Come on up. Hello, Chairman. Hello. Good morning. Uh, my name is Hector Carrillo. Uh, I work with the Grand County Sheriff's Office, been there for 12 years. And I'm just uh, here up, up here to reiterate what uh, Corporal Manny uh, Maldonado had said. Uh, throughout these 12 years, I've seen employees come and go, and these last few years have been the most, and mainly because of the problem of the pay increase. We, uh, right now, I know, we know that the Silver City Police Department has uh, received a pay increase and some of our officers and deputies have moved over um, to their agency as well. Uh, we know that the mining district, which includes Santa Clara and Baird and Hurley, we know uh, Santa Clara and Baird have received raises and I understand that their budget we don't, we don't have control over. But their, um, their starting pay is almost at our starting pay. Uh, for those of you that, that do understand and know our job, we are the backbone for, for Grant County. So we back up Hurley, we back up Santa Clara, we back up um, Bayard, and we even back up Silver City. The, the problem is, is that most of the time there's a cross-commission problem here where we can't ask for Bayard or Santa Clara to assist us because of the cross-commission. But we're able to assist them, and we do every time they ask major crime scenes, um, we're the resource. So we're their backbone, and in, up to including the Silver City Police Department. Uh, the only agency that I know right now that can help us if we need any help is the New Mexico State Police, uh, which, which they help us whenever we can. But uh, the main point to this is that we are the backbone of, the, of all Grand County, and all we ask is to have or to be considered for at least a pay increase to um, to match with the Silver, at least with the Silver City Police Department. Thank you. Any further public input? Come on up. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Administration, and Public. My name is Frank Gomez. I'm a sergeant with the Grand County Sheriff's Department Patrol Division. Uh, some of the other issues that we're bringing up, I know the sheriff has been pushing on, is our radio communications. As the other deputies have spoken with you of the coverage that we cover, we also cover up to Mule Creek, Interstate 10, the Hachita area and stuff, and our radios do not work. And with the crime and the violence that's going on right now, uh, maybe you guys can help us as well 
to expedite the situation, the, what's going on with the radio systems. Um, going 90, 75, 80, 90 miles an hour running code and trying to switch to an uh, EMS channel or something like that because our county frequency doesn't work is, it's uncalled for. It's, it's a safety violation. God forbid one of our guys get hurt because we can't get our radios fixed. Um, and that just being in the mining district and assisting the mining that are going on the call in the mining, our radios don't even work. Our portables don't even work on the road, on the sides of the street, uh, here at the office. I mean, we can't get through our dispatch because our communications are so, they're just not working properly. So we'd appreciate if something could work like that. Also, uh, our police units, I know the budget and everything is so expensive and everything, but we put a lot of mileage on our units. I have a 2013 Tahoe um, brand new that I received at 89,000 miles already this year. 89,500 uh, with Stone Garden miles and, and stuff, but our units are getting really, overly high in mileage and another safety precaution of, of what needs to be done. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Further public input? Any further public input? Well, thank you for all your input. We'll move on to minutes. Approve or disapprove? Oh, did you have public input? Come on up. I'm not going to shut you up. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Richard Minus, and I've been a, 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 re a resident of Green County for over 62 years. And uh, one of my uh, my concerns is I want to, uh, uh, with this new resolution that the state legislature passed, which is a uh, Senate bill, Two seven zero for the approval and use of ATVs on roads and paved roads uh, to and as the, the, the county to try to adopt or and make resolutions and an ordinance so we can be so we can use county roads with uh, our ATVs and and. Uh, and uh, I would like for the county to kind of review that to let the public, you know, let us do to the do to the state, uh, the state of New Mexico passed that legislature for the use of off-road vehicles and ATVs. Uh, I did a lot of uh, I did some research, and uh, uh, the misconception is that a lot of people. Uh, Think that uh, we want to let the ATVs and and, and uh, the quads, the one those uh, where where it's a one operator doesn't have seat belts, and and uh, I got some uh, input from the Hurricane uh, Police Department, Bear Santa Clara, and the, the Sheriff's Office, and and they recommended me to uh, not not to approve of the ATVs. But the UTVs, which are side by sides, which are bigger, bigger and, and have more control and safer, and they have a roll cage, they've got seat belts, and uh, I'm asking the commission to to foresee, you know, to to allow the the UTVs and uh, uh, the ATVs. I don't uh, for safety reasons. Uh, I got a lot of input. That they, they they don't want ATVs on the on the roads and people, and I told them, well, uh, there's that because I own a UTV, which they call side by side. They're larger, bigger, and uh, they got a, they can be seen. Uh, all we need, uh, I just finished putting on those uh, uh, DOT approved tires for for the for the streets and big roads and the highway. And uh, uh, I would suggest to for all UTV operators to use uh, to install um, signal lights as a safety precaution in the streets and paved roads. But uh, I wish you guys could look into that to adopt an ordinance for the use of uh, UTVs. I'm advocating UTVs. Uh, I respect bicycle riders. Motorcycle riders, uh, that's their preference. And I think we should all be equal. And 
How's that argentine uh, UTV? Should have the same right as a bicycle rider in the roads, in the big roads, and uh, also the motorcycles. But they don't have, they don't carry seat belts or a road cage, but they're still allowed. Which uh, uh, I respect. I respect the bicycle riders. I respect the motorcycle riders. And now with this new bill that was enacted, I, I, I don't think the legislature would do this if it was very unsafe. But we do have to be wise of choosing what type of uh, vehicle, off-road vehicle to use. And uh, with all the input that I got from uh, the law enforcement and, and the mayors of Santa Clara, Baird, and, and Hurley, and, and uh, the, the, the sheriff's office, uh, they did really recommend that uh, the UTVs be, be considered to, to be on big streets and highways. So that's my, my input. So I wish you, I hope you may adopt and make an ordinance, you know, where uh, UTVs could be used. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice Thank day. You. Okay, one more call. Any other input? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Jacob Diegos. I'm a deputy with the Grant County Sheriff's Department. Um, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on our pay and um, also the radios. Uh, our radio service is a big safety um, safety problem. You know, like uh, Sergeant Gomez said, uh, we do go to calls and we are not able to use our handheld service. And uh, dealing with traffic situations and domestics and uh, batteries and some of the other high intensity calls that we do get, it is imperative that we do have radio communications. A lot of the time that we go out to calls, say in Cliff, um, Gila, uh, Hachita, we have to use our cell phones. So it is a big problem. Also, um, a lot of other counties and municipalities are offering bonuses to certified law enforcement. Uh, that makes it hard to retain um, officers, certified officers, to this department. Uh, our pay scale as well. Um, I just wanted to reiterate on those situations. Thank you. Further input? Okay, now we'll move to minutes. Approve or disapprove July 21st, 2016 work session regular meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve the July 21st, 2016 work session minutes. Sir, the motion is second to approve the July 21st minutes. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. Approve or disapprove the July 27th special meeting minutes. Motion to approve the July 27th, 16 special meeting minutes. Second. The motion is second to approve the July 27th, 2016 special meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Financial report. Linda, can you go through the expenditure report for me, please? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, there's an expenditure report for approval in your packet, and um, there's AP checks totaling two million three hundred thirty-nine thousand five hundred twenty-one dollars and fifty-eight cents. Included in these AP checks is a check to Ascent Aviation, and this is for Jet A and Aviation Gasoline. That total is fifty-seven thousand eight hundred seventy-four dollars and sixty-one cents. A check to Stoven Construction for um, the conference center remodel and roof repair, and that is for two hundred thirty thousand four hundred fifty-nine dollars and nineteen cents. A check to Artesia Fire Equipment, and this is for miscellaneous fire equipment for the Lower Mainbrus Fire Department, and that is for eighty-seven thousand two hundred and three dollars. A check to Cooper Enterprises Earth Moving, and this is for a water truck for the road department, and that is for $16,000. A check to the New Mexico County Insurance Authority. This is for the fiscal year 2017 workers' comp um, insurance premium, and that is for $226,005. 
a check to Engineers Incorporated, and this is for a project payment for the North, North Hurley Road Colonias project. This is for $11,505.78. A check to ACA Architects, and this is a project payment for the Alice Mesa substation. This is for $23,869.37. A check to Hallway Construction. This is the final payment for the office remodel. And this is for $28,793.80. A check to Mastercraft Metals. And this is the final payment for the road department roof repairs. And this is for $63,150.35. And included in this expenditure report is also um, payroll checks totaling $457,795.68. And this is for pay period 15, um, 16, the academic incentive pay and the sheriff's department boot allowance. Um, the grand total for the expen expenditure report is two million seven hundred ninety-seven thousand three hundred seventeen dollars and twenty-six cents. And is there any questions on the expenditure report? Thank you. Motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion we approve the August 12, 2016 expenditure report. Second. Mr. Motion and second to approve the August 12th expenditure report. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. D. This is uh, Mr. Bolt is going to give us a short presentation on the Freeport McMoran Community Investment Fund in relation to the partnership with Western New Mexico University School of Nursing and the Grant County Senior Programs. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Chair, Commissioners, Council. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rob. <laughs> it's very nice to see you all again. Um, let me get that thing away from me a little bit. Um, I'm here kind of in a dual role. I am and proud to be Grant County's representative on the Non-Metro Area Agency on Aging. That's a mouthful. State Advisory Council and have been so for, I think, six or seven months. So in that role, I'm interested in senior projects and what's going on with the funding for those programs for the contracts that they hold, of which the county is presently the contractor for that. But this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. And I know that you heard up from your county manager, who I really have to congratulate on her vision. Um, she knows and wants to um, make sure that our senior centers and our seniors are well taken care of. So I, we wrote together with the county as, as the fiscal agent and the New Mexico School, um, Western New Mexico School of Nursing, a grant to Freeport Matt Moran, a community investment grant last fall, which was funded, which is a great thing. And it was one of those ideas that you just think, aha, uh -huh, we could do this. And fortunately, the School of Nursing has adopted a new curriculum, what they call womb to tomb, which sounds a little morbid, but um, it is about <laughs> community work for nursing nursing students. So when I approached the School of Nursing after approaching um, Ms. Webb as fiscal agent, they said, of course, we would love to do that because it's what our our curriculum is demanding, and that's community-based nursing for the students. So what is it? the project is called Helping Seniors Stay Healthy. We asked for $17,300, and they actually liked it enough to give us 20, which is unheard of, <laughs> but we were very fortunate to do that. It gives us a little coordination money. I've got my notes down here. I want you to know the senior population in the 2014 um, uh, data is at in Fort Grant County around 7,012 people. Of that, um, this project purport, proposes to serve 1,500 people from the period of September 1st through June, through the end of June, this grant period. We have five senior centers that are contracted through AAA to receive congregate meals, um, homebound meals, and transportation. This effort was meant to meet many other needs that we know and we used to have in this county um, before the county graciously took it over and everything would have been gone if you hadn't. Um, a senior? That's no. Me. No. <laughs> I think you're it, Brad. I don't know. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> Sixty, isn't it? I would say. There's a you know, like they, there's 
They're probably varying definitions. Not for the senior program. For discount purposes. Yeah, for discount. You can get the movie cheaper. (laughs) (laughs) For these purposes, um, according to contract, I think it is 60. So, but that is really under contract to receive the services at the senior centers the county contracts for. This doesn't have that definition, but it's probably closer to because it will serve those people in the centers. Um, but we're all getting there if we're not already there. Plus, when you get <laughs> white in your beard <laughs> or your hair. I know, we saw it though. <laughs> You're old. So, what will happen? One starting in September, not too long from now, through June, one every month, one week a month, the nursing students, the appropriate level nursing students, which will be twos, and their instructors will visit each senior center and offer to them that one that that day's worth there'll be two cohorts of students, that day's worth of services, health care management, home and safety checklists, an array of uh, basic health care services, which I think you heard a little bit about on the work session, um, that, as we know, and I visited um, and talked with, and I live in the members, so know the member as seniors, often our seniors don't take very good care of themselves, don't have the resources to do so unless they have family and they are involved. Um, Senior centers are natural hubs for these kinds of enhanced services. So what they are going to do is give them an array of services that will include the following. And we're trying to work out an estimate of what these would cost if these were reimbursable services, which many of them are, and we hope to make that attractive. Uh, the services will include blood pr- blood pressure, glucose checks, heart rate checks, pulse oximetry, lung function, um, ear, nose, and throat checks, which are really important, detecting hearing and infection, um, medication checks, medication management. I know some seniors that are on over a dozen medications. And side effects from contraindication and mixing those kinds of things, they get really um, complicated and, and frightening to seniors. They don't quite know what to do with this. So medication management, big time. Balance checks, that's a really uh, uh, important thing to do for an assessment for a senior because it has a lot to do with neurological activity and their ability to function on that level. Behavioral health checks, as Dr. Neil Bowen has said to me, check up from the head up because you need to know that too. We have a lot of seniors who um, misuse uh, uh, their drugs and uh, suffer from addiction problems and substance abuse as well. So chronic disease management is huge in this county. You can, um, diabetes itself as well as COPD and CHF and other things, but particularly diabetes is a major problem for many of our residents. And we're talking littles up to our elderly, but with the elderly, the comorbidities that surround diabetes and not well managed diabetes often. <laughs> They lead to all all kinds of horrible things that happen to their bodies and death. And so we need to really look at chronic disease management through this, too. This is a good um, start to help them understand and see. And we're going to referrals and information. uh, The information will be shared with the doctors as well. And they're going to have booklets that will be kept at the centers to gauge these things. We think that the seniors are going to love this because they're getting personalized in um, attention from healthcare professionals. The instructors are there with the students um, on a monthly basis, and they're in a familiar place. They're, they know these centers. They're comfortable there. So we're really excited about this opportunity. Um, the, let's see. The seniors are going to gauge their own healthcare improvements through this and through conversation with the nursing students and the instructors, and um, fill out some surveys for them. And the nursing students want to collect data on this kind of thing because it's kind of a it's a pilot for almost a best practice sort of thing for for senior centers. So. Um, we're really excited to do it, and you, you know I can talk a long time, but I won't. Um, I just want to say that uh, this is the beginning of something that we want to do with our senior centers. Our population is aging, there's no doubt about it, and we really have to look at what those needs are. You know, I used to, you hear that old saying about, you know, the, the elderly are like children. Well, no, they're not. 
In fact, many of them don't even want children in those centers. <laughs> but um, the fact is, in talking with, and especially at these state meetings, um, our elderly, our, our folks, unless they are really fragile medically and need that kind of help, they have a wealth and lifetimes of experience and expertise and things that really need to be, stories that need to be told and um, appreciated and to be respected for those uh, for that, those lifetimes. And it's really interesting and I'm going to end with and then stand for questions to invite you all to go to your senior centers. Go and have a meal, but you have to call first because they need it for the count. <laughs> and um, talk to them. Learn about what it is their lives are like now, what their needs are, what they appreciate because it's a really, really interesting um, thing to do and I, I qualify. So um, I'm thinking about my life too. But, you know, I tell you, some of these folks that are in their 80s, and 90s and chugging right along they are amazing people that have a wealth of information for us and we can appreciate and respect all of that so that's my invitation to you go to your senior center support the funding for these programs and i'll stand for any questions you may have well, first of all chris i want to congratulate you for once again stepping up and helping our community you've been a value to 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 casa uh and uh once again Again, you're stepping up. And one of the things I want to say too, in, in talking to uh, Brian the other day at the hospital and stuff, and I, you, you gave figures for 14, but we're, we're seeing more and more seniors come in to Grand County because of the programs that, in fact, we have, like you're talking about, our hospital, uh, the university, and, and, and our weather, a beautiful country that we live in. So, uh, programs like this are very valuable uh, because. You know, the transportation alone that seniors have a problem with, 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 you know, that's really important. And some of them just, they want to go to, they, you know, they don't want to go to, to the doctor and stuff. And so if they can get it done at a center, then that's better. So thank you once again for stepping up for our community. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity to tell you more. Thank you, Chris. No, I said thank you. Now don't get it going again. Get it going. <laughs> okay, the next item on the agenda is to re approve or disapprove a proclamation declaring September 17, 2016 as Recovery Grant County Celebration Day. Is there anybody here in the audience that's here for that? Okay, not. Uh, Bernadette, would you go ahead and read that proclamation for us? For our September's National Recovery Month, when our federal government promotes the societal benefits of prevention, treatment, and recovery from alcohol drug use disorders. And whereas thousands of citizens in Grant County are in recovery from drug and alcohol use, they have made it a lifelong commitment to not using alcohol or drugs. And whereas their contributions make our families, businesses, and community stronger. And whereas their acknowledged success is a beacon of hope to those still suffering from alcohol and drug use disorder. Now therefore, the Grant County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim September 17, 2016 as Recovery Grant County Celebration Day. May everyone in our community acknowledge respect and celebrate our fellow citizens in recovery, redouble our efforts to help those still suffering from mental health and substance disorders, and join together as a community in celebrating this day. In witness whereof, we have hereon to set our hands and seal of the county of Grant to be affixed in Silver City, Grant County, New Mexico, this 18th day of August, 2016. Motion to approve. Motion to approve the proclamation declaring September the 17th, 2016, as Recovery Grant County Celebration Day. And I second. The motion to proper second to approve this proclamation. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those favor say five say aye. 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 Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Approve or disapprove the transfer of three 2006 Crown Victoria vehicles from the Grant County Sheriff's Department to Western New Mexico University Police Academy. 
Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the transfer of the three 2006 Crown Victorias. Second. So motion is second to approve transferring three 2006 Crown Victorias to the university. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove fiscal year 2017 fire protection grant applications for the following volunteer fire departments. Lower Members Volunteer Fire Department, Santa Rita Volunteer Fire Department, Tyrone Volunteer Fire Department, and Upper Members Fire Department. Motion to approve fiscal year 2017 fire protection grant applications for the lower members, Santa Rita, uh, Tyrone, and Upper Members Fire Department. Can I second? Can motion is second to approve uh, the aforementioned fire departments grant application. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those favor say pops in aye. Aye. Motion passes. Approve or disapprove the county equipment inventory deletion list. We went through this list on Thursday. Tuesday, yeah, that it's Thursday today, isn't it? Skip two days. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve the county equipment inventory deletion list. Second. The motion is second to approve the equipment inventory dis deletion list. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Agreements. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1637. This is a capital appropriation grant agreement with the New Mexico Department of Finance and Administration Local Government Division to purchase and equip a chip spreader for the road department in Grant County in the amount of $100,000. Motion to approve agreement number A1637. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the capital appropriation grant agreement. And for those of you that don't know, what that was was a capital outlay from the legislature. We're just approving the grant agreement from the legislature. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1638. This is another capital appropriation uh, grant agreement with the New Mexico Department of Finance Administration, local government division to purchase a portable digital x ray machine and related equipment for Gila Regional Medical Center in Silver City. The grant is in the amount of $125,000. Same deal. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the agreement number 8-16-38. Second. There's a motion to approve A-16-38. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove agreement number A-16-39. Agreement with the North Central New Mexico Economic Development District Non-Metro Area for Agency. You're right, Chris. That's hard to say. <laughs> on aging for the senior employment program for fiscal year 2017. Motion to approve agreement A1639. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve A1639. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1640, agreement with the North Central New Mexico Economic Development District Non-Metro Area Agency on Aging for Direct Purchase of Services, vendor for fiscal year 2017. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve agreement number A16-40. Second. Motion and a second to approve A1640. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1641. Agreement with the North Central New Mexico Economic Development District for Non-Metro Area Agency on Aging for Nutrition Services Incentive Program for the fiscal year 2017. Motion to approve agreement A1641. Second. And motion and second to approve A1641. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove amendment to agreement number A1514. Task order number three with Bohannon Houston Inc. to rehabilitate, to rehabilitate, rehabilitate <laughs> the runway 826 construction phase. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve the amendment to agreement number A-15-14. Second. 
Motion and second to approve the amendment to A1514. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove an extension of the general services agreement with OCAM engineer and which changed from engineers Inc. to July to July 30th, 2017. Motion to approve the extension of general services agreement with OCAM engineers Inc. to Se July 30th, 2017. Second. And a motion is second to approve the extension of general services agreement with OCAM Inc. To July 30th, 2017. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove ratification of the Rodeo Law Firm engagement letter for bond council services in relation to 2016 Fort Baird Hospital bonds refund. I see Perry in the audience. Anybody have any questions for me? No? Okay. Do you have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve the ratification of Rody Law Firm's engagement letter for bond council services in relation to 2016 Fort Baird Hospital bonds refund. Second. The motion is second to approve the Rody Law Firm engagement letter. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those favor, so I'm saying aye. 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 Resolutions. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1632. Adopting an infrastructure capital improvement plan for Grant County projects for the fiscal years 2018 through 2020. Motion to approve R1632. Second. The motion is second to approve R1632. Is there any discussion? I was just going to go through the top five for everybody. The first one would be the Grant County Administration Facility Upgrade. Um, asking for 350000 in 2018, fiscal year 2018. Uh, Grant County Business Conference Center asking for 500000 in 2018. Public Safety Vehicle Replacement Program asking for 120000 in 2018. Corey, Corey Camino's Passenger Bus, we're asking for 50000 no, 210000 in 2018. And the Grant County Detention Center up, upgrades, uh, 65000 in 2018. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. We're also required to have a an infrastructure capital improvement plan for the senior citizen center. So approve or disapprove resolution R1633, adopting an infrastructure capital improvement plan for Silver City Senior Center for fiscal years 2018 through 22. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve resolution number R-16-33. Second. Motion is second to approve R-1633. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, stick five, stand aye. Aye. Approve or disapprove resolutions to R1634, adopting an infrastructure capital improvement plan for the Santa Clara Senior Center for fiscal years 2018 through 2022. Motion to approve resolution R1634. Second. Motion is second to approve R1634. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, stick five, stand aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1635, adopting infrastructure capital improvement plan for the Members Valley Senior Center for fiscal years 2018 through 2022. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve resolution number R-16-35. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve R-1635. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, seeing five, stand aye. 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 Motion passes. One more. Approve or disapprove resolution R1636, adopting an infrastructure capital improvement plan for the, Hena, for the Gila Senior Center for fiscal years 2018 through 2022. Motion to approve resolution R1636. Second. Motion is second to approve R1636. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1636. 1637, authorizing and approving the submission of a completed application for financial assistance and project approval to the New Mexico Finance Authority to develop a comprehensive plan. 
Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve resolution number R-16-37. Second. Motion and second to approve R-16-37. Is there any discussion on that motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution R-1638. Notice of intent to consider the adoption of an ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a loan agreement between Grant County and the New Mexico Finance Authority, evidencing the obligation of the county to pay a loan and principal not to exceed $48 million. Motion to approve. Resolution R-1638. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Why, Perry, how are you? <laughs> Usually $48 million gets their attention. Uh, un unfortunately, $48 million is, is too low. Uh, the number's been changed to $55 million. $55 million. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Perry? All right. Well, we're going to have to amend that one. Let's get to it and see what we got to do. How many places do you have to amend that? Yeah, we just make it, make it an original motion, then it can be reflected in the other pages. Uh, I believe Perry's already revised the other documents. Oh, yeah. So it's just the agenda that says. Just the agenda that's wrong. Okay. okay. I uh, then uh, move to amend. Uh, my motion on R1638 from 48 million to 55. And I second. There's a mo uh, amended, uh, a vote on the amendment that is properly seconded to amend the motion from 48 million to 55 million. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Now, can I get an approval on R1638 as it stands amended? So, 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 there's a motion to approve R1638 as amended from 48 million to 55 million. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, sit by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1639, authorizing the submission of applications for airport aid to the Federal Aviation Administration and to the New Mexico Department of Transportation Aviation Division for runway rehabilitation phase two construction. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve resolution number R-16-39. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve R-1639. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item Y. Approve or disapprove a resolution R-1640, a resolution placing a question on the ballot for the 2016 general election to consider whether Grant County should impose a four mil levy pursuant to the Hospital Funding Act to provide funding for Gila Regional Medical Center. Um, oh, Brian, you're already here. <laughs> I'm sure we have some more questions for you. Uh, so if you guys have anything, I'll let you go first. Well, I think more of a comment. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that, in fact, we had a sunset on this. Uh, you asked that question Tuesday, and we're affirmative on that. There is a sunset of four years, correct? Correct. My other thing, uh, just a comment, um, we, you know, I did some calculation on some property that uh, I'm aware of and, and some people who are my constituents, and this is going to be quite healthy uh, of a raise in their property taxes. And uh, uh, that's the reason I, I really think it's important for us to be affirmative on this, because if we're affirmative on this, then that means it goes to the public to vote on it, which I, I would like to see, because then each... Each person who has property then can evaluate their own situation and make a determination of how they should vote. And so that would be just a statement. And our county assessor, I believe, will be doing a report um, uh, later on about those specific figures for everyone. And, and I totally agree. I, I think uh, it is substantial, but, uh, you know, our, our hospital is very important to this community. We've got a lot of elderly folks here, and, and, uh, and some of them are here because of the hospital so close to their to the residents and what have you. Yeah. Um, but I would like to see some kind of 
of wording within stating that if for some reason the levels come back to the 2008 area, that we abolish the mill levy. You know, whether that even would be even close to happening, who knows. But just in case it does, it would abolish the mill levy. And if we're talking about kind of the state support through safety net care service, if it were to come back up to 2008 or 2009 or those levels, we would not need the assistance from Bexar County, and we would most certainly surrender that. And I also feel that we've got to support this resolution just to get it out to the people and let them decide. Appreciate this comment. Yes, sir. So I guess my questions are along the line of we know your financials. We've seen the loss in revenue. We know that you used to get $18 million in whatever it's called, safety. Safety net care pool. Yeah, that's what they call it now. Your unfunded or your uncompensated care, has it remained near the same or is it lower? Because I know the whole thing of the Affordable Care Act was to take the money away from the top that was being sent directly to the hospitals and fund it through people, through insurance and Medicaid, Medicare and such, so you get funded from the bottom side. Can you tell us what the difference is in that now? No, I don't have the exact figures in front of me, and I can get those for the commission. But an estimate would be we've probably, with the expansion of Medicaid, we've probably netted an additional two, maybe $3 million in additional revenue. And I can get you exact figures because it ramped up over a couple of years. And I can get you exact, but probably at this point, we have an additional $2 to $3 million from the Medicaid expansion. So would it be fair to say that government funding that used to come directly to the hospital has been reduced by two-thirds approximately? Yes. You used to get $18. Yes. You're getting $4. You're getting $2 now through insurance. So you've lost about $12. $10 to $12 million we're still making up as a result, yes. And I can get the exact figures on that, but it's still approximately, conservatively, $10 million. And you've done a tremendous job of going through the organization. And I hated every minute of having to agree with you on cutting services because nobody wants to cut services. That's not what we wanted to do. But we also know there are services out there that other organizations could do that you released, and I appreciate your diligence on that. Yes, we shifted the services in that way to the community. That being said, I know that the assessor is going to go through this in more detail in a second, but we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of $3.2, $3.3 million that this assessment would make up per year. So that still leaves you short of what you were in the neighborhood of still $9 million. So we're clear. We're not making it whole. We're not even getting close to whole. Thank you. But I know you have to have some way that you've gone through, some process that you've worked through, so you know you need $3.3 million. Can you just go through that for me real quick? Most certainly, Mr. Chair. There's a couple of data points that we look at to determine that amount. One is if we look at our finances, and I think we looked at it with our one-on-ones a couple weeks ago, our funded depreciation, right? We're depreciating equipment all the time through the organization. And it's a common statistic that organizations look at to determine approximately how much capital equipment they need to replace in their organization. Our funded depreciation at the end of fiscal year 2016, ended in June, was $3.3 million. So we know it's around that amount of money. If we were to look kind of functionally this year, the amount of equipment we needed to replace, and we have a very, very diligent process how we vet capital equipment requests and how we justify capital equipment requests. But we had requests after all the justifications were done, 
of uh, four plus million dollars for this year. Now, because in this past fiscal year we ended the year about three point, uh, you know, three million dollars in the negative, essentially we don't have, we didn't earn enough cash this year on the revenue expense side to contribute to that. So we're pulling out of our cash reserves, but we're about. We're, we're slated to spend about $2 million in capital equipment. That leaves us $2 million short for just this year. And if that were to continue each year, you, you see how that problem is compounded. That also doesn't account for the growth that we need to uh, move forward with in our hospital. That's just equipment. That's not building upgrades. As we all know, we've been talking about, or Gila Regional has been talking about, needing to expand its operating room, its recovery room, so that our citizens don't have to wait as long to get into our, uh, you know, OR services. We know that we have OB services, labor and delivery services. We don't even have windows in those rooms. They've been talking about doing these improvements for 15 years. So we have some capital building projects uh, that are coming forward that we need to approach. So this year, we're at four million plus need in just capital equipment. As we take on those other projects and potentially fund some of those through debt, you know, we're looking at closer to five plus million dollars for the next several years that we're going to need just to take care of our equipment and building upgrades. And so that so what we're asking for, we're not asking for uh, our citizens to cover all of our capital needs. We're not asking for that. We're asking for help. And so we looked at that. We thought 3.332 was a reasonable number to ask for support from our citizens for for their hospital, for their county-owned hospital. Uh, we wanted a portion of that to be uh, supplemented. And that's where that number comes from in part. Yeah, I'm glad you that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, because I have discussed with Jeremiah Garcia, which is our chair of the board, and also uh, Senator Morales. We also discussed maybe a one mil levy, two mil levy, three mil levy. But of course, the four mil levy is what fits what we're going to be needing at the hospital. So I appreciate the explanation. And uh, um, I just, uh, you know, I, I really felt at the time that we need to look at the other at the other mills. So uh, yes. Uh, so that's a great explanation. So I appreciate that. Very welcome. Uh, you know, in our conversation, you know, we talked about it was really important to get this information out to the citizens, and uh, the hospital has agreed that, in fact, they will go out and make presentations to the community so that they can ask questions and better understand the process. Yes. Okay. Yeah, many, many open forums. Okay. And, and then they would address this at the general election in November. That's our request, yes. Okay. And I think it's basically... The people need to ask themselves, do we want to continue the good services that we've got with our with our four star hospital? Yes. Or do we want to regress and, and chance losing some of these services? Yes. So and um, it, this is a, a big question for the people of Grant County. Yes, and we'll make that case. And if, if services were to regress, if we weren't able to replace in a given year a, a standard piece of equipment that a rural hospital should have, then our citizens, obviously we're driving down to Las Cruces or wherever, we want to help our citizens avoid that cost and the lost time of having to travel long distances for services that a rural hospital should have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate it. Mr. Assessor, do you want to go through your portion now? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to... You want to, we, let's take a short recess because they're going to set you up on the on the screen. Okay. So if I can get a motion. So just motion. Five. Second, second. Second. All those in favor, sing five, say aye. 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 We'll take a five-minute break while they get them set up on the screen. Call back to order the regular meeting of the Grant County Commission for August 18th, 2016. We're in the process of... Uh, discussing resolution number R1640, a resolution placing the question on the ballot for the 2016 general election to consider whether Grant County should impose a four mil levy pursuant to the Hospital Funding Act to provide funding to Gila Regional Medical Center. At this time, we have our assessor, Raul Torrieta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members, elected officials. Uh, for starters, uh, I uh, 
I did sit down with Brian and uh, our county manager and our attorney to make sure that we can uh, actually put this on the ballot, and uh, we have had some incentive uh, uh, conversation on all this. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just giving a breakdown on all the school districts on what the actual increase in property taxes, okay? And for starters, it's one-third of the full value. So that's what's going to be the four meals on top of that is one-third of the full value. So you get actually your know, full value, let's say $100,000, uh, one-third of that, that's what's going to be taxed on that. And I'm going to be talking nothing but taxable value. And uh, the final numbers will, will hit the net taxable value, and I'll explain that in detail. And if you want to ask any questions during, during the presentation, please do so. For starters, uh, we did, uh, I, I sat with the county attorney and uh, our uh, city uh, our county manager and uh, we did go up to chapter 4 for the counties on section 448b12 tax levy authorities. In other counties it shall not exceed more than 4.25 and that's uh, in millage it's uh, 0 0.00425. And uh, on, on the statute the only thing the assessor does is implements the tax levy authority. Once it goes to the voters and they approve or they vote for this increase of the millage, I actually create a special authority for the hospital. And it goes directly straight to the hospital. It doesn't deviate anywhere. After I, I send it over to the county treasurer's office, they do the distribution and it goes to, to the hospital itself. Uh, I broke it down into school districts. Uh, for example, uh, let me go ahead and start off with our authorized mills. Uh, I got this information from the Department of Finance and Administration, and we are maxed out on our millage at 11.850. So we do not have any re remaining authorities. We try to discuss uh, with, with the hospital if there was any way possible we could bring in a mill or two mills, but uh, we are we are maxed out on our uh, on our authorities. The rate average of property tax rate by county mills. Uh, for Grand County only, and this is also from the Department of Finance Administration, and I was talking to Brian about this, where in the resident, it's only 16 mills, 0.325, and in the non-residential, it's 22.113, and copper is being valued at 21.561. And uh, I put a little asterisk at the bottom where it says the second lowest state uh, wide, what happens is we're pretty much one of the lowest millage in the whole state. And uh, if you go through the Department of Finance Administration, it will actually show you all the millage. And uh, we're pretty much at the bottom with our millage. And uh, following the market trend and the millage for the last 35 years, we pretty much have stayed consistent. I broke it into one in Silver City residential taxable value of 2015. Once again, here we have the full value of a $50,000 house. Divide that by three, you have a taxable value of $16,000. I used last year's rate for 2015 in Silver City residential only, and it's 0 .017776, and your property tax would be $284.42. If and if uh, the four meals pass for the one in residential for the hospital, it'll be exactly $65 for a $50,000 house. Once again, it's being taxed under one third of the value called uh, taxable value. At the bottom, you see the net taxable value where if you have the head of household exemption, you save $35.55. And the veterans, you save $71.10. And that's pretty much straight across the board on the one in, sub uh, one in uh, district. Your total is about $106 of savings. On an $80,000 home, as you can see, taxable value of $26,666. Uh, your tax will be at 474 and $1, and you're looking at a $100 increase for the four meals. And once again, under the $100,000, $133, $150,000 home, $200, and also the $200,000 home, you're looking at $266.64. And that's just only the residential area, okay? I didn't really break it down in the non-residential, but I'm going to give you the complete numbers on the non-residential, residential, copper production, livestock, and so on. I've uh, broken out also on the one out, as you can see, the tax rate 
for the one out for 2015 is 0 0.015105. So the millage is a lot uh, lower due to the fact that they don't pay under the municipalities on their millage. Uh, that's why the rate is a lot lower than the ones inside the city limits. And once again, a $50,000 home, $65 increase, uh, and 80, uh, because of the four millage, it's going to stay consistent. Say with the $80,000 home, $100,000 home, $150,000 home, and $200,000 home. Also in Santa Clara, as you can see, their millage is a lot higher due to the fact that uh, there's not that much activity going on. As a matter of fact, I've taken quite a lot of value off uh, Santa Clara due to the uh, vacant homes and uh, uh, a lot of salvage value, but uh, they're working on it and then I think it's going to increase for the next two years. But uh, once again, if you see these homes in Santa Clara, there is a substantial, you know, the 65, 101, so it's pretty much straight across the board. I also go down into uh, the residence down in Baird. Their millage is the same as Hurley, Santa Clara, and uh, and Baird. So as you can see, the total increase of the $349.11 on top of the $284 with the $65. Also did that one for the uh, also did that one for well all the school districts. Uh, I'm also going to break it down on the on the non-residents if, if you need me to do so. However, this is actually the complete breakdown of the net taxable value of 2016. Here's the estimated tax that the uh, the Gila Regional Medical Center will receive would be three million three hundred eighty six dollars and eighty eight hundred and twenty two dollars dollars. Um, the uh, interesting thing about it is, is when I got contacted the Department of Finance and Administration, uh, we didn't think that copper production was going to uh, feed into this pot, but actually on the non-residential of 146 million, we do uh, even the livestock of 8 million, uh, the state assess, matter of fact, we're about 2 million plus on the state assess of 52 million 488,433. And uh, that has been pretty much staying consistent. Uh, copper production at 227 million, and once again, we're talking about taxable value. 227 million, 121, 258. A total valuation for the whole county is 846 million, 705, 500. And that, uh, broke, broke, I broke it down to the net taxable value. That's minus all exemptions from your head of house exemptions, veteran exemptions, 100% uh, disabled, uh, the freeze. And I actually broke it down at three million three eighty six eight twenty two and at this moment we are also working on a on a reappraisal for 2017 and uh, there are also uh, the state of New Mexico under the Department of Finance and Administration and also uh, property tax division is uh, asking me to put on a three percent cap on top of that for the year 2017 and that's uh, that's on residential uh, properties only any questions? Uh? Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everything okay? Thank you so much. That was easy. Um, next, I'm going to ask, uh, I'll let you clear out your stuff. Next, I'm going to ask Chairman Garcia if he has a few words to say. Mr. Chair, Commissioners, and staff, uh, I'd just like to talk a few minutes pertaining to the future of our hospital. Um, we have challenged our CEO and his C team to really look at the future of where we are, where we're going to be when we look at two-year, five-year, ten-year programs. And it's really important that you know you as a team, as well as our community, understands that this is critical. This is very critical is our health care in our community. And it's important. So I look at my two years, I look at my five years, and I challenge them, and even our board does, as to where we need to go in the future. We've had a lot of hard times, but we have really changed our hospital as it is today. But we also see in the future the our nation's crumbling health care programs and what's happening, how it affects our federal to state level down to us. And one of the things that I really look at is uh, it doesn't seem as though we're going to have a lot of assistance in the future. And we have to look forward as to strategically where we're going to be. And sometimes it looks like we look at a point as 
sometimes we're going to have to take care of our own, our own community. And you know that each one of us here has probably been in our hospital and has received care. And we want to continue to, research, to do that service to our community. I do look at um, aging equipment and how are we going to replace that equipment. I think each one of us has that question, and we challenge our board on that. Other things that we look at is remaining current in advanced medical fields that we provide services for our patients. Um, the risk we have if we continue to lose days cash in hand as we're trying to keep the hospital whole and sound, um, it, it, it really puts a signal to everybody. And uh, my fear is, is our service providers that we have in our community could start seeing something go wrong. And to keep quality physicians in our community, quality health care clinics in our community, it's all impacted. It's a domino theory. And then I look at my employees, the caregivers. It's important that we try to provide the best equipment they need to provide the great service that we provide to our patients. So it's important. And all I ask is all of you is to consider um, our future, our future hospital, and where we need to be. I mean, we just received our four-star rating. That's outstanding. A lot of hospitals aren't even close to this. And so we can see the improvements coming. But if we won't proactively, you know, uh, make a strategic plan, we can really hurt. And so what I'm saying is we need to open our eyes. We need to share these values with our community and everyone in this audience. It's important that we make a decision. And I really, really like the opportunity for our commissioners to approve this resolution and take it to our constituents to vote on it. They need to weigh their values of what their property tax will be assessed. They need to look at the services we do provide. Uh, I mean, again, we are a small rural hospital. We can't provide everything to our community, and that's why sometimes they have to go elsewhere. But we want to still give the best quality we can. And we as a board feel that this is the next step to improving the quality of care we give to our community. And all we're asking is support. Uh, again, we don't want our services to dwindle. And strategically, we're looking at this is probably the best time to start doing this is to take care of our own, take care of our hospital. So all I ask is support. That's all I ask for. And that it's so important as we look towards the future. And I'd just like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you as a trustee on this board. And again, uh, they put trust in me to be the chairman of the board. And again, I think we are working in the right direction and we need to continue to work in that right direction to be the best rural hospital in our, our nation if at all possible. But we're moving there. And thank you for this time. Thank you. Uh, Brian, do you have any questions? Yeah. I'll give you another. I think so. Thank you. Brian, do you have any closing thoughts? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, during the previous session, you had asked a question about the difference in uncompensated care, and I and I threw out an estimate of the increase in Medicaid funds we've received through the Medicaid expansion. During the break, I checked the exact figures with our controller. And it's actually not $3 million. It's $5 million of additional revenue we've received through the Medicaid expansion as of this last fiscal year. Still puts us at a difference of about you know, $10, $11, 12000000 million uh, that we've been cut from the, from the safety net care pool in previous years. So still a big uh, deficit to make up. And I wanted you to have the exact figures. And, and I would just thank you all for your questions, and I look forward, if, if approved, uh, having this discussion with our constituents, our citizens, and uh, we, we are here for them. Gila Regional exists as a county-owned hospital to serve the health care needs of our communities as best we can, and, and we'd love the opportunity to continue that at the levels uh, that we are committed to. So thank you. Any questions? Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, question by uh, Commissioner Ramos earlier. He asked if we could end it earlier if we realized that we didn't need um, the mill levy anymore. And actually, the statute says you can do it for or impose it for a minimum of, of four and no more than eight. So once you put it in place, it's in there for four years. That's what. And then okay. it'll expire automatically, or you can put it back on the general uh, ballot. Okay. Thank you. Well, I guess it's time for a motion. Okay. Okay. A motion to approve 
Resolution R1640. Second. So there's a motion and a second to approve R1640. Is there any discussion? I've got plenty. You know, it's not just hospitals. Shame on our state and our federal governments for putting our rural communities in such dire straits. It's not just hospitals, as I said. Every school district in southern New Mexico, the universities in southern New Mexico, every municipality, every county detention center is being inundated by unfunded mandates every day to the point of near emergency levels. We need to do this, and I'll tell you why we need to do this. Las Vegas, Nevada waited too long. They lost their OBGYN labor delivery department because they waited too long to do this. Um, I spoke to Senator Morales this morning. He wanted us to know that uh, he was 100% behind the commission's approval of this resolution and would be an advocate for the levy passing in November. I've said it before. You guys have heard me say it. If you do not take care of yourself, do not expect anybody to take care of you. So that's my, my comment on that. Is there any further comment? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Skipping one. Yep. <laughs> Approve or disapprove resolution R1641. Notice of intent to adopt a new animal con control ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve, approve resolution number R1641. Second. The motion is second to approve R1641. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1642. Notice of intent to consider the adoption of an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a series project revenue refunding bonds in a principal amount of not to exceed $55 million. I learned. Motion to approve. R resolution R1642. Second. There's a motion is second to approve R1642. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, I want to point out that this $55 million is not in addition to the $55 million for the NMFA loan agreement. It's an either-or. Uh, your uh, financial advisor and the Department of Finance and Administration are working to figure out which option is going to save the most money. We'll go with that option and drop the other. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Bids. BB. Approve or disapprove bid number B1601, rehabilitation of runway at the Grant County Airport. Um, where we are going with the, which is we discussed in the, to go, well, Hamilton's the only bidder, but we discussed to keep our millions, right? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve bid number R16-01 to James Hamilton Construction. Second. The millions to say? With us keeping the millions from the project. Second. Second. So there's a motion to approve bid 16, B1601, rehabilitation of runway at the Grant County Airport with the Grant County retaining all the millings. Is there any discussion on that? It just thrills me that uh, somebody local got the bid, and I, you know, I, I, really, I really am happy about that. Yes. Keep local jobs. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say five, say nine. Aye. 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 Motion passes. At this time, I'd take a motion to recess the Grant County Board of County Commissioners. Second. All those in favor, say five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Call to order the Grant County Indigent Hospital and Health Care Healthcare Claims Board. First item on the agenda is approve or disapprove July 2016 health plan claims indigent fund in the amount of $14,226.29. Motion to approve. 
the July 16th health count health plan. Yeah, it's not that plan. easy to say, is it? And it's just fine. You're laughing 14. at me. <laughs> and I second. <laughs> There's a motion and a second to approve the health plan claims for July 2016. Any discussion on that motion? I just did that to make you feel good. I'm glad you did. <laughs> All those in favor, say five, say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor, say five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Call back to order the Grant County Board of Commissioners. And at this time, we'll stand for elected officials reports. Sheriff. We've been extremely busy lately uh, handling. Uh, like you heard earlier, we've been doing a lot of calls for service in different communities. Uh, so my guys have been really on the go. Uh, as you guys are all aware, we um, had a, an unfortunate incident that happened just south of us uh, with an officer involved that was uh, involved in a shooting. Um, they are having funeral services this Sunday in Las Cruces, and I have authorized some of my staff to attend this funeral and support. Uh, so they will be going down in a marked unit and in uniform to support this uh, community that was affected by this tragic event. So if, there, if, any, if you get any calls saying that, that there's units in Cruces or whatever, that's the reason why they're there. They have been authorized by me to attend this and, and show support. Uh, currently, we are uh, catching up on some of our biennium training. My staff has been going through training the last couple of weeks. Uh, last week we did biennium, which is for our certification to stay certified with the state of New Mexico. Uh, this whole week we've done firearms. Um, all my staff is, is out at the range shooting, getting qualified, preparing. We're doing different things to prepare for us ever, hopefully never encounter, encountering a situation that happened in, in Hatch. We're being a little bit more uh, stringent on our training in regards to uh, being prepared. Uh, next week we'll continue with our biennium training. So we've been doing a lot of training in-house, which isn't really costing the county much money because I have in-house trainers that is providing all this training. We have also uh, invited the municipalities that are part of this training and you know, keeping them up, up to speed with their biennium and, and training that they also need to keep their certification. Other than that, you know, it's been just uh, pretty busy. You know, I want to thank my staff for what they do, you know, with uh, everything that's going on nationwide with law enforcement. You know, I just want to encourage them to continue. It takes a special person to do this job, and I think we need to keep keep them here and keep them going and keep them positive and just uh, show them that we support them and take care of them. Other than that, I have nothing else unless you have any questions. I do have a question. I know we had brought it up before about the radio situation. What steps are we taking to try and get this fixed? Currently, uh, we actually had a dispatch board meeting, and I have been diligently working on the radio issues. Uh, I have been in contact with the. We actually went out of out of Silver City, and we're dealing with uh, advanced communications out of Las Cruces. They have assured me that they would come and check. We have filed a case with the FCC uh, to send an investigator down to figure out what's going on with, with our frequency. Uh, they were supposed to have been here since last week. Uh, they had, a, they had a, an alleged incident where the tech got hurt and hadn't been able to come down. So they're supposed to be here tomorrow. We're going up to the mountain to go. According to the investigator from the FCC, he wants this gentleman to go up and check to see other things to see if they can't figure out what's going on with it. Uh, once he does the testing, then the FCC investigator will be coming down. It's something that I've been diligently working on. I, I hear this every single day that I am out monitoring the radio, listening to my guys out there patrolling, and, and it is a major, major issue that needs to be addressed. And we're, we're not sitting on it. I'm trying to get it resolved. I'm hoping that we can get something done sooner than later. We have had close calls where communication has been an issue and it needs to get fixed and we're going to continue to work on it until it's done. You know, I'm not going to give up on it. So I just, uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It, it is frustrating and it's frustrating to me too. I know I deal with this daily, you know, and I, and I don't blame my staff for coming and wanting to get something done. But it is something that's in the works. Who do we contract with right now to get that fixed? Right now, we our contract was through Sierra Communications um, here locally that, that t monitors and takes care of all our radio stuff. But he has not been able to figure out what's going on with us. So that's why I went out, reached out, and 
got put in contact with uh, Ben Rada Las Cruces, uh, so that's why we're dealing with them. But it's we're on their schedule, you know. And unfortunately, I have emails to show that I've been after them over and over. To the I CC the county manager on them. She's aware of all these contacts that I've made with this company that we need them to come down here and, and look at this situation. And the FCC is unfortunately. They take a while. They have a lot of stuff going on, so um, um, we're working on it. So I take it we're going to need to go ahead and put this out for bid with the new company? It's, I'm not sure what the process is going to be after this, if Charlene might be able to respond to that. Commissioner um, Ramos, um, there is no current contract with your communications. I could never find a contact that was current. Um, I learned a great deal of information yesterday in the dispatch board meeting that I think um, provides us some different options and I'll be scheduling a meeting with the sheriff to see if there's some other avenues we can take some other companies that are out there. Um, maybe looking at some additional frequencies. I was shocked to hear they have only one. Um, so I'll be getting with the sheriff this week and scheduling a meeting and seeing what we can do to move forward with this. I think there's some other options out there that maybe haven't been explored to this point. Is there any way to pick that off of the board? Yeah. That's one of the options. That's Okay, because that's, uh, I mean, they have communication everywhere, so that's something we really need to look at. And then what they did not, Mr. Chairman, what they did not mention earlier is that we have been uh, utilizing the volunteer fire channel. We've been utilizing the bird repeater. Uh, we've been utilizing the Silver City repeater, and it's just, I mean, like they say, it's, when you're running hot to a call, you know, to be switching frequencies and that, you're, it, it, it's not, I mean, that's not safe, you know, they're, they're being distracted with their, for their approach. So, I mean, it's something that really, really needs to get done. And, I mean, I'm not sure if there's going to be cost, what it's going to be, but it, it has to get done. I guess I'm kind of shocked at how behind the times the radio world is, because I can tell my car to change the radio station and it does it without ever looking at the dash. But right. Well, unfortunately, we're not up to the technology we are, you know, as far as equipment. We're so behind on our equipment. We're, we're so backlogged on, on the updates and, and, you know, equipment that we have to do our job. It's, wow. A lot of it's outdated and, you know, we just, I mean, it's understandable. Funding is always a big deal, but, you know, like what the hospital needs uh, upgrades, so do we. we. We need a lot of upgrades in, in our systems and, and enable us to do our job too. So, you know, I'm hoping that's taken into consideration. Yeah. Okay. There is, um, I believe there's some funding options out there through FEMA, through inexorability grants. Um, that's been a big deal for years. I think that money is still out there. We can explore that. And then when you mentioned bids, um, there's some other um, companies out there that um, we can do through state contracts for. Um, governmental contracts without having to put it out to bid. So when we need, we can just contact with them immediately. And of course where we live, the mountains and stuff, we all have dead spots even on our phones. And so uh, that's a, it's a difficulty that we have. And, uh, you know, at the, I guess it was a meeting before at the dispatch, you know, that was my comment, is that probably one of our most important parts of our community is that communication with dispatch, assigning fire, police, and such, is very, very important. Because that's where it begins. Whenever you have a heart attack or whatever, or an accident, you need to get communication. And so that's something that we need to look at hard and invest in and make sure it's working right for the citizens and for our, our, uh, our uh, personnel who's out there protecting us. Okay. And, I, and just last thing, Mr. Jim, I would appreciate the support from you guys. Thanks. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Mr. Torrieta. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, I would like to just acknowledge, uh, you know, I was going to do this in public input, but uh, we had a softball tournament this weekend, and uh, uh, Commissioner Ramos is there. Well, next time you better put on a glove, okay? About five years or okay. <laughs> was this where he, uh, where he was the ump? Yes, sir. Yeah, he was the ump boy. They, they oh, booed he him didn't look too beat up. <laughs> oh, I like to congratulate the uh, Morning Star. They won their division. Uh, there's two teams at their 50s and uh, and also the 55 Boomers. We had a lot of fun, even though I, I ended up playing with a team from Tucson. I promised them about a year ago. But we had we, we ended up falling short. But uh, I just wanted to acknowledge the guys. They're a bunch of great guys to play with. 
Uh, for starters, I would just like to make a couple comments. Uh, I, uh, I've been working here since 1981 as the, you know, in and out as the assessor, uh, deputy, uh, praiser, so on and so on. And uh, I have actually seen so many things happening here in Grand County. Uh, for example, losing over $351 million in valuation on, on copper. Uh, we weathered that storm. I've seen other storms that uh, really affected the property owners, the taxpayers. And as I see with the hospital, you know, we, um, as a matter of fact, I had to go to the hospital yesterday to get some blood drawn, and the service was fantastic, and I uh, have no complaints. But uh, the only thing I would just like to say is I'm so glad that Brian, uh, our county manager, our, uh, our attorney, and um, Jeremiah Garcia, where we are actually throwing these numbers out there so you can see exactly what's happening. We don't want to hide anything. Uh, I want to be as transparent as possible. If anybody wants to talk to me about anything to do with property taxes or valuation, please uh, contact my office. But um, I've seen a lot of this going down within the last 36 years, so we'll see how things go. But uh, I would just like to just share that with with, uh, with the commu commission. Well, we're uh, we're still hitting it hard with the reappraisal. You know, we're out there picking up value. Hopefully, I can buy a radio for my sheriff Tokayo here. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, we are actually doing the subdivisions at this moment, and uh, I do have people on the field constantly. We received our building permits finally after waiting for the last seven, eight months, and we have over 100, 150 building permits at this moment that shows a good positive on the economic situation. Uh, we're still catching up on our deeds and our uh, sales ratios uh, analysis. Uh, our individual, uh, Matthew Myers, has done a sensational job on, uh, on our sales, and we're actually comping everything out on whatever it's really valued out on the books. Uh, I just uh, re I just got back from a two-day training. Uh, Jennifer uh, Barraza, my uh, chief deputy, and I went for a Tyler uh, uh, Tyler meeting. It was a two-day meeting. It was quite interesting uh, due to the fact that uh, we need techs here in the city of New Mexico. And uh, the problem in hand with Tyler is they have techs that handle California, they handle Colorado, they handle Arizona, they handle Texas, and we really need individual techs just to take care of the state of New Mexico because there is some issues with the Tyler program. And uh, we did voice our opinions. and. Um, there was over 60 of us on the uh, users group, and we did voice our opinions. And uh, later on, county manager, I'll talk to you about, about that. After that, on Thursday, uh, I had a trip up to Santa Fe. We had to meet with the governor's aide by John Momfort and Larry Behrens. We have issues on property tax division. Uh, we still don't have a director for PTD. And uh, one of the main concerns that we talked about was state assessed properties. And uh, we're in the process of recreating the forms, hoping to find out where all these state assessed properties are. It's a very, very big issue. And the whole state is uh, literally losing a lot of value. So uh, we are getting with uh, with state assess uh, and uh, state assess for property tax division, hopefully that we can create a cab four and uh, and continue with uh, finding out exactly what's on the books. And I am going to take the initiative myself, where I am actually going to review the majority of these properties on state assess. Uh, we're interviewing for a position for the appraiser one position, and we've had, uh, I did 10 interviews yesterday. I got two more today. We have a, a few handfuls of good candidates, and I thought that uh, I had to interview all of them, and I'm glad I did because I can see exactly what people are out there looking for jobs and um, giving the opportunity to whoever, you know, comes in to apply for these positions. We've been training and training and training with my new staff. Um, our main concern is quality control, and uh, we're constantly out in the field, but our main deal is trying to make sure that we put everything on the books properly and to stay fair and equitable. I'm waiting for the results at this moment for uh, the IWO classes, the International Association of Assessing Officers classes for uh, Jennifer Barraza. She took course two, the income approach to the valuation, and then a couple of employees, uh, Tracy Bernstead and uh, Lorraine uh, Zunich, they took course one, and they're on pins and needles. I can't believe it takes about a month just to get the results, but uh, that's where we're at at this moment. But uh, I stand for questions on the uh, report for the assessor's office.
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also attended the uh, Board of Directors for the New Mexico Association of Counties. You want me to do that report now or, or way under? Thank you very much, Chairman. Actually, I uh, for uh, Judge Hall, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Hall, and uh, I uh, it brought back a lot of memories because I was on the board, and thanks to uh, Commissioner Ramos, he pretty much handed uh, the board of directors uh, when I first started over to me, and I thank you very much. Uh, I uh, had a lot of information uh, uh, thrown at me, and it felt uh, it's been a while since I've since I've been stuck with the New Mexico Association of Counties. I was on the board, and I was also on the executive committee for about four years, and I really enjoyed uh, being up there and meeting with the, with the whole state. For starters, um, we uh, they mainly talked about the PILT monies, and uh, we I'm so glad that our county manager and our attorneys and, and our commissioners that we signed that document uh, to still have that PILT money, because if we don't do that, it's going to go to the East Coast, and that's one thing they started talking about. So everything's really positive on, on the PILT monies. Uh, the interesting thing that uh, we saw was a um, was um, I thought I turned it off. Uh, one of the interesting things is uh, on the shortfall. I remember our Senator Morales uh, stood up and said that we were about 300 million shortfall on our, uh, uh, you know, for the state of New Mexico. Finding out uh, they were talking over 500 million at this moment. It's over 750 million, and uh, it was a very in intensive uh, conversation on how we're going to create. Uh, I, I guess everybody's losing money, or we, you know, we need to do something. So they did entertain the motion about the gross receipt tax, and they also entertain the motion about uh, property tax and um but uh, they're going to be meeting on August 23rd and 24th up in Santa Fe with the Legislative Finance Committee. And uh, I would like to be there, to be honest with you, because uh, it's very important issues due to property taxes. Uh, they talked about health care funding. Uh, for the legislature. They also uh, discussed uh, quality control. BLM spoke. Uh, it was a very, very good meeting. Uh, we actually had a vote for the NMAC resolution for, uh, for the year 2017 uh, legislative session. So we actually picked four priorities. There was, there was some for the assessors, the clerks, commissioners, probate judge, treasurers, and uh, non-elected uh, affiliates were actually were the priorities. Uh, the first one was the E911 priority and um, that was for the managers, commissioners, fire and emergency, GIS and the sheriffs. That's priority one. It was voted by 23 uh, votes. Uh, the other one is the managers and that's a priority one and that was the Whistleblower Protections Act, and that's for the uh, attorneys and managers, and it's a very big priority at this moment. Uh, the legislative resolution for the policy committees, uh, criminal justice reform policy committees, priority one, it's forfeitures, and it's actually for the sheriff's department, and it's the highest priority, and that was over 28, it was 28 votes. Uh, the last one, and uh, they were only going to do three of them, but we threw the fourth one in, is economic development and infrastructure policies, uh, and it's priority one, and it's under capital outlay, non-governmental entities, and it's mainly for the commissioners and the managers. Everything else, uh, there's quite a lot that I could talk about, but that's actually mainly the priorities, and I stand for questions, Commissioner. Any questions? Seeing none, thanks, Bro. Thank you very much. Mr. C.D., oh, what's up in the Treasurer's Office? Good morning, uh, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, Steve wasn't able to make the day, so he asked me to uh, stop by and, and uh, not have the report. And we're on our way to our average of 96%. We're at 92.4 um, as far as, as our collection is concerned. Uh, one of the things that I, I did just finish putting liens on all our delinquent manufactured homes, which has produced a little bit of, of revenue coming in because uh, uh, motor vehicle does send letters out to the owners along with uh, mortgage companies as well. So they, they've already been hitting and we have been doing a little bit of collection on that as well. Um, other than that, everything's business as usual. I do want to emphasize now tax season is around the corner. Um, the individuals that have address changes, please contact the assessor's office or our office for address changes. And all those, uh, also we have people that are paying off their mortgages. Um, contact our office because uh, if their mortgage was paying, 
the taxes uh, they paid off there are no longer. Some people forget to tell us, and then we're going to bill, and then all of a sudden they're delinquent. So if you've paid off your mortgage, I uh, appreciate a, a call and let us know because we do not send them a bill because we send it to the mortgage company so that way we can make sure we take off the mortgage company and they get their bill and make sure that their address is correct as well because some have had to get their mail at the street or a P.O. box. We want to make sure that, they get that we get the right address as well. So that's all I have. Thank you. Linda, do you have anything to add to finance or anything? Right. No. Okay. Madam Manager, nothing? Commissioner. Well, just the oh. problem. You're on the wrong side of me. Yeah, wrong side of me. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of business as usual in our office. Uh, we will be attending election school training for the general election August 29th, 30th, and 31st of this month. And then at our next meeting, I will give you all the dates for our upcoming uh, November election, which will include early voting dates and all of that good stuff. My apologies for missing that. Okay, Ms. I, uh, I attended a meeting over in TRC on uh, Monday night. It was uh, a meeting that the county commission over in Sierra County had. It was to discuss the road closures. It was a very good meeting. It seems like uh, the Forest Service really has a, a really good attitude now with this new administrator, um, Mr. Adam Andonka. He's been very open to listening to what we have to say and, and opening to talk with us about the issue. So it's been really good to be able to speak to somebody that is at least willing to listen versus what we had before. You know, he is all for coordination and, and uh, hopefully we can we can discuss and uh, change things in the future. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to see that, that he's listening, and I think the biggest difference is he's from here, you know, versus somebody from California that's already closed millions of uh, miles of roads. So I, I really think it's going to be uh, it's going to be nice to work with somebody that really cares about the area and its and its cultural value. You know what? Yeah, I've heard him as well. Oh, did he? That's right. <laughs> All right. Right. Now, uh, another th I, I met with a couple residents over on the ridges. They're really concerned about speed bumps. They really would like to have speed bumps over there, being that there's a, a lot of people flying through those streets. And it, it, was, it was really something, because when I, when I parked there, it seems like it, I, I don't know if he uh, staged this or what, but there was some people flying through there. <laughs> and uh, so I would really like to look at the, uh, the uh, road ordinance and see if we can get some speed strips versus speed bumps. Um, talking to Earl, uh, he stated that it's easier to deal with speed strips and because you could unscrew them and take them out whenever you're going to work on the on the road and screw them back in once you're done. So uh, that's really an ordinance where I really like to look at. Um, uh, we we did have a twin sister uh, project uh, meeting over with with the uh, with the Forest Service and and the uh, city municipalities uh, last month and it, it was a really good meeting. Um, it seems like everyone's on board with trying to get ourselves a uh, a, a wetlands project over on twin sister. You know, help our uh, uh, help the area hopefully with with some visitors and and maybe some bird watchers and hopefully we can get get a reservoir big enough to uh, we can, to where we can have some fishing um, we're looking at actually we're looking at small ponding small ponds so uh, um, you know we're, we're just in the planning stages now but it does really look good uh, we're, we're going to get next next step is to get an MOU together with all the entities and uh, we're going to start uh, working with the game and fish to see what we've got to do to meet their demands so that we can try and uh, generate some monies for from them too because they can qualify for a lot more monies than, than what we can and uh, the Forest Service qualify for a lot of monies for wetlands so we're really happy to see that they're excited about our project um, other than that I just uh, hopefully we could get the radio situation fixed and any anything that you need from us please let us know uh, Sheriff and uh, we'll do everything we can to help thank you so, uh, a lot of my time has been spent, of course, with Tucasa. Uh, pretty excited now. We exist, 3200 32nd Street. So once you get an address, I think that makes you feel good. You have a home. Uh, 
We're just completing up the easement into the property itself from 32nd Street. We have a little bit of paperwork left to do to accomplish that. We are now close to putting out a bid, I think, for the uh, uh, drilling the uh, holes underneath the uh, uh, 32nd Street for our utilities and such. Uh, we continue to work uh, on expanding our services to the community as far as substance abuse is concerned. And so uh, things are looking really well. We're looking at probably uh, September, uh, uh, later, latter part of September for groundbreaking. And so that's always a plus. So we're excited about that. Continue to work on the animal control and with the boat today and uh, the work that the committee is going to be doing, we'll be able to uh, bring that to the commission for a possible uh, vote. And uh, also uh, meetings with the Cliff Gila community reference to a baseball program. I went there and basically I gave them some options about how they can get some funding and such to accomplish that. They would like to get uh, the superintendent was there and um, he was um, really helped out a lot as far as the silver schools are concerned. Uh, talking to him about even a possibly a uh, high school baseball program. So um, I, I, I think that's great. Um, then, of course, uh, just responding to the regular uh, uh, business of uh, citizens giving me a call, stopping me at, at Walmart and at coffee for trash programs uh, and um, uh, everything uh, clear to uh, roads. And I responded to them to go talk to you guys. Well, I actually, I just want to remind everyone, he's got four months left. So we won't have some road issues. We've got to contact them as soon as possible. They have. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Um, I want, once again want to send kudos out to Ben with cats and, and thank him for getting our AV stuff up to spec where everybody got, has, a, has a microphone. It's a lot easier than passing them back and forth. And uh, the TVs are much nicer than the screens and playing it on the wall. That was all paid for with... Uh, franchise fees. So uh, the conference business center, I, I toured that last week. It is really coming along. You're going to you're gonna really be in for a treat when you go in there. It, it's amazing. You just keep going and going and going and there's more and more and more in rooms. It's going to be able to be used extensively every day. Um, we need to start thinking about management of that. I've got a feeling we're probably going to end in about November. We're going to have to start thinking about how to do that. It's a big job. It's not a that is not a one man job anymore. Uh, solid waste authority. Um, one of the the biggest issues with solid waste is is just the trash. It's just the amount of stuff that blows every day. Abigail. <laughs> that sounds like George Strait. That was your cue to stop right there. Uh, one of their biggest problems is just the, the amount of trash that blows prior to being able to be covered up. And, and um, I urge the uh, the judges in town to, to use their ability to send people out there to help us pick up trash along the fence lines and such. I know they do some of that with community service. And they did. Once, once, once they're convicted, mm -hmm. then you can mandate uh, labor. Right. And, I, and I'm, I'm not even talking about people necessarily in the in the detention center if they if they're um, sentencing. Yeah, sentencing to, sentencing. Yeah. Well, once they get the found guilty or the yeah. then you can mandate labor. Because that way it would be a a, a, a a freeway, almost freeway, of getting a lot of that kind of stuff picked up and the the the, the uh, solid waste authority would really look uh, favorable on some help. Um I think that's all I had today. Does anybody have any, anything for seconds? Okay, thank you very much for coming, and I take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes.